Absolutely amazing. You know, <clears throat> so I'm going to act as if I have a virtual tie on. I'm going to loosen it a bit because we're going to get a little controversial. I'm going to step it up a little bit. As an interviewer, I always tell people that the, the mark of a great interview and more importantly, a great interviewee and a great interviewer is that we, we got to be able to ask those harder questions, yes, not sir. for the sake of controversy, but for the sake of reaching everybody and what everyone would like to have um, spoken about or towards. Yes, On that note, let's talk misnomers. Um, this is a very controversial point brewing in the Israelite community right now, and I want your thoughts on it. You live in Israel. Yes, sir. You were born in Israel. Yes, sir. You visited the full length and breadth of the land. You probably know where I'm going. Yes, sir. There's a thinking that exists right now today in 2024 mm -hmm. where we, we have Google today. We got YouTube today. We have so much access to knowledge and information today, but there is thinking right now that is telling people that Israel is not Northeast Africa, it's South Africa. Ashriel, as someone born in Israel, as someone who has, I'm assuming, attended tours of the land in your younger age, maybe even conducted your own tours to people who are newly coming in. Yes. Please teach us how to understand the nature of the need to correctly frame and place Israel where it is in history. Teach us why the thinking that Israel is in South Africa is either correct or incorrect, and that the teaching that Israel is where you live is either correct or incorrect. Teach us. You know, um, another one of our teachers, uh, the Honorable Prince Shaliach bin Yehuda, um, the eternal uh, dean of the School of the Prophets. Um, he was one of the three uh, main establishers of the community. He always taught us that uh, when you see um, somebody who is mistaken and you stop to argue with them about their mistakes or a fool, he said a fool, my bad. Um, then he said that you put yourself in a position where somebody who somebody else who's walking by could look at you all and they wouldn't be able to tell who's the fool and who isn't. You're arguing with somebody about something that's clear. The arguments that they have are not arguments that are based on anything that is biblical. It's not based on anything that is archaeological. It's not even based on various accounts of things. I mean, I could I could go down the list. Um, you know, Beersheba, uh, where uh, Abraham walked. Uh, there's no uh, Beersheba in South Africa. There's there's no place that you could be able to take and to say that this is where Beersheba exists. Um, there is no uh, archaeological findings of a Jerusalem that was conquered by the Romans and by the, the, the Greeks and by the Arabs and by the Mamluks and by, there is no, and by the crusade, there is no Jerusalem that you can be able to point out. If Assyria is near Israel, there is no Assyria near South Africa in the South. When you speak about Egypt, somebody going down into Egypt. Come, if you're going down from South Africa, then you're going to be going down into the sea. There is no Jericho. You couldn't walk from Egypt back into the promised land in South Africa, unless you're saying that the other countries around South Africa somehow house all of this, some somehow were overtaken by the Romans in 70 AD, somehow were overtaken by the, uh, by, by, by the, um, the, the Greeks in uh, 313. If you, there is no archeological finance, 
And nobody is arguing that that is. So I'm not going to argue that it isn't. Hmm. Because nobody is probably besides some people in the communities that may be arguing about this, but the same way you argue about New York City, for example, and somebody said that the real New York City is in California. There are landmarks. There Come is on. history. Come on. There is archaeology. There are people who've dedicated their lives to researching this. There are peoples who existed in these areas. I don't know of any Canaanites mm. who existed in South Africa. Come on. I've never heard of this before. Nobody has ever talked to me about all of you know these people existing in that era. When they said it, the Babylonians came in and overtook the country, or at least the, the, the southern part of it. The Assyrians came in and overtook the northern part of Israel. Jerusalem was established by David as the capital of Israel. I don't know of any of this that was found ever in South Africa or any place else besides here. Come on. While I live, I'm going to inject interject real quick, right? So where I live, unfortunately, I have to mail out to this to the state of Israel to get artifacts. But nonetheless, artifacts exist there. Right? Exactly. So I'm holding up the the seal of King Hezekiah as an artifact, right? I'm also holding up the seal impression of Isaiah the prophet, right? Yeah. As an artifact. These are some of the things found in the land of Israel. Yes. Right? I'm holding up the Tel Dan inscription, mm. which has the House of David in Paleo Hebrew. Mm as an actual artifact found in Israel. Yes. I just want everybody to think about something. And, and as I'm saying it, I want to read a quote from our princess on our, in our chat. She says, the ignorance it takes to tell folks actually in the land where it's located, especially never having been there themselves is quite astounding. That's like someone not ever having gone to my house, come into my home and tell people that the rooms and locations of items in my home are misplaced because they, they really belong to this region and that region. And they're saying this, Ashriel, with no archaeological data. You see, one of the things that's unique about telling history is that history comes with various monikers necessary to place said history. You understand this very well. You have a degree, I have been studying you. <laughs> you have a degree in political science. Yes, sir. But as someone who lives in the state of Israel, born there, you live in one of the parts of the world that's like a museum to the globe. Everybody's fixated on the history of the Bible. Israel is a walking museum, as it were. There's hardly a place that you can go that we haven't had a treasure trove of artifacts from. So just imagine that the narrative that's being formed is taking away from the amazing work that has been spearheaded by you. So I thank you for that. We won't stay on, stay on that because I also want to say this. The goal of critique among brothers and sisters is never to let our brothers and sisters look or appear ill-informed, look or appear unenlightened, look and appear wicked. Yes. But critique is necessary yes. simply for the retelling and retelling of the truth. That's it. Yes. So because it's not personal, we won't stay here. And I'll move on to something else. On the idea of misnomers, 